Hey everybody, welcome to Round the Twist. It is February 24th, 2015, and it's episode 196. I'm going to call this the slightly sick one. <laughs> um, you can probably tell just by looking at me. It, obviously, I skipped recording last week, which we'll get to later, and I'll explain why I'm recording early this week. Again, later when we get to various and sundry. Uh, suffice it to say, I don't have coffee with me this week. I am... Uh, rehydrating at the moment. So, start with what I have on my needles. I know it's been almost two weeks since I recorded. I've made, I'd say for me, with the way my schedule is right now, I'd say I made quite a bit of progress, but uh, I'm still holding myself up by my old standards and going, you didn't do enough. But life conspiring against me as usual. So first things up, what I have on my needles in my Stitch by Jessalou Jane hat little box bag. I have my Firefly themed 2x2 two two hands of blue yarn. This is from Friday Studios, the lovely Frida. It is her Monday base which is, as you can see, a 75% superwash, 25% nylon in her 2x2 two two hands of blue colorway, which these are going to be socks for hubby, the ones he asked for uh, about five weeks before Christmas. And I laughed in his face and said, yeah, that's not happening for Christmas. So I figured I better get going because the poor dear, we're living in Colorado. And granted, the weather this winter has been beautiful, but... Uh, he is complaining about his feet being cold. So the poor deer, I need to actually like knit him some more wool socks so he can stop wearing just the two pairs that he owns. Daisy, what are you doing in my craft room? Daisy Duke. Yes. Are you getting into trouble? This is my cute co-host this week. Uh, the babies are upstairs napping. So this, the munchkin is all that you get. Are you going to come see me? Come on. Come on. We'll see how long she stays here. Probably not very is going to be my guess. So two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago. Yep, there we go. I had just barely started the ribbing on US 1s. This is on my Chaigu. 2.25 millimeter needles. I'm still not in love with that cable, but it is what it is. I have managed to finish, as you can see, the what's going to constitute the entire cuff. I was zooming along on these, and then I realized that, oh shoot, I should ask Hubby how long he wants this cuff, because, hello, I'm not making a six and a half, seven inch cuff for me. I'm doing a shorter cuff for him, so let me see, measure here exactly how long did I make this. I don't even know. I was counting stripes. That's all I was doing. So from the beginning about five and a quarter inches to where I put the waist yarn in for the heel and you can see that there that is some leftover oh good gracious what is that I don't even remember what what yarn that is I just dug through my little scrap bag that I have left um, oh bugger it's one of the big box ones. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna beat myself up now, I can't remember. I can see the label, it comes put up in a ball. It's not Kuigu, it's not Regia, it's not Patton's. Oh, poop. Anyway, I took, obviously, put in my scrap yarn, you can, that lovely little pink stripe right there in the middle of the blue. And I wasn't sure how the patterning of the stripes was going to come out, so obviously it's doing black, white, black, blue, black, white, black, blue as it goes through, which I'm kind of loving. Uh, a little bit darker than I was expecting, but since these are for hubby, that's okay. 72 stitch vanilla sock. Uh, I am four full stripes past where I put in the waist yarn, so I'll keep going for quite a bit. Um, if I make these just slightly longer than what I'd make for me, then they tend to fit hubby because his foot is a little bit wider. 
um, hoping he likes them. So those are getting knit on. Those are my, uh, when my brain can't handle anything else, I pull these out and knit on these. So uh, I hit a point on, I think it was, it was Sunday where I wasn't even knitting big and I'll talk about that later. Um, and these just sat in my bedroom next to me and did nothing but look wistfully at them and go, I want to knit, but I can't. So I did get quite a bit more done on my second socks, which are in, sitting over here in my Tangerine Designs bag, the TARDIS, TARDIS yarn stash storage bag. This is the Atlantic Current Socks by Melia Bella, patterns by Melia Bella also called Atlantic Current. I am knitting this in the 72 stitch size. There we go. So the larger size on US ones, which I'm hoping is going to have enough stretch. I haven't actually tried these on yet because these are for me. They look quite narrow, but I think I've got enough stretch in between that those slip stitches shouldn't make too big of a deal. Again, uh, last show I had just barely started the ribbing on these. So now you can see quite a bit better how the yarn is working up. This is Into the World Pakoku. Pakoku. Where did I put the tag? Did I put it in the bag? If I was smart, I did. I did. Yay! Did something intelligent this week. So, yarn is from Into the World. Who focus, please, new camera. There we go. And it is their Captain Tight Pants colorway. So, more Firefly theme stuff. And their Pokoku sock yarn. It is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. It is quite a bit softer than the Friday Studios. Her Monday base isn't Superwash Merino, it just says Superwash Wool. So it feels like much more of a workhorse yarn. This one versus this one. Uh, like I said, with the Atlantic Current pattern, the stitches, the slip stitches are making it pull in a little bit, but I think I'll be okay. And then I did do end up doing, oh, let me get this transferred over to the cable so I can stretch it out a bit more. There we go. I did do, oh, bugger. Obviously, this is the slightly sick one. I feel like I'm not prepared for anything. There we go. Uh, this is Melia Bella's uh, I Have Partridge Heel. I decided, why not? I haven't done an eye of partridge heel since I did my Dublin Bay socks shortly after I started knitting socks. And I disliked it then. And I think it's because I was such a new knitter. Um, it wasn't my favorite thing. I had a terrible time keeping track of the four row repeat. Uh, and I was doing it on double points. I wasn't magic looping at that point. But I like it now. And i just doing a traditional gusset. Um, there we go, shoving everything back on the needle instead of the cable again. So, traditional gusset down the side. I didn't do it on the bottom this time. And I made it all the way through the gusset, so now I'm motoring my way out the foot. Uh, I got quite a bit of this done. Actually, last night I started watching um, Supernatural never seen it before started on Netflix with season one at like 1 30 in the morning I just decided I need a new TV show to watch hmm do I want to watch MASH do I want to watch Supernatural and Supernatural went out for some reason I don't know why it did and I got eight episodes in before I finally was like okay I have to put this down and just stop so yeah I got an entire six and a half, seven inch cuff, a heel flap, turn, gusset, and probably an inch or so out the foot. 
on the first sock and I love this I, it's so soft the colors are absolutely beautiful I wish I, you guys could see this better it's going so blue because I have my monitor on but I I, I need to have the monitor on so I can see what's going on on the screen. I shouldn't need it anymore because of switching to the new camera, but I'm, I'm paranoid from the old camera. I want to make sure things are focusing the way I want them to. Ooh, that's actually pretty close. Still working on the lighting here in the basement, guys. Sorry. Uh, figuring things out, and this was not the week to work on anything new. So those are living in that Tangerine Designs bag, and actually got a little more work done on them than the other socks did. So that's all I'm knitting on. I did not start my county redemption sweater. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna very quickly go over to YouTube here, you guys, and see um, someone from uh, ah! Yes. Someone from Denmark over on YouTube was kind enough, kind enough to give me the correct pronunciation. Uh, oh, there we go. Choo, 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 choo. Come on, screen scroll. Ah! Uh, I'm just going to say Meta. Uh, Meta was kind enough uh, being a Dane to help tell me the correct pronunciation. It is Kauni, uh, not Kauni, like I was pronoun pronouncing it, pronouncing it. Wow. Okay. Maybe I should have brought coffee instead of just some juice. Wow. So I have not started my Kauni Redemption sweater. I am just, uh, I didn't have the brain space for it the last couple weeks. First, well, several things happened and it just, it didn't happen. So I'm waiting until my brain can wrap itself around doing the two color ribbing and then I will get that started. So that's everything I have on the needles. I have not touched my spinning wheel because I haven't really, I haven't been down here in about a week, week and a half almost. And my spinning wheels live here in the basement so they're out of little baby finger reach because Tara has expressed quite a bit of interest in my bee, which is honestly the least breakable of my two wheels. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm, I wanna get the babies introduced to it. They're already interested in my knitting as in grab the cables and pull. So I have to keep make sure everything is bagged up, zipped up, nothing laying out as of right now. Um, it helps if I remember to put the tags back in the bag where I can find them next week. So, no, uh, I showed you all the knitting, no new spinning. I did get some stitching done. So on to pokey things. I say some stitching. The sampler is done. Ta, 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 ta. Finished, completely done. Well, obviously it needs a good bath and press and uh, framing, but the stitching is complete. This is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery 2012 Kwai Winter Sampler, which I'll link to in the show notes. All the stitching is done. The last two, uh, I had the gold frame around 24 done and part of the gold frame for 25 but I actually finished them so we'll get up close so you guys can see my lovely little X's that is a lovely partridge and a pear and a wreath obviously uh, I'm so happy to have this done I started this I feel like so long ago and it has been almost two years when I went back and looked because uh, I started it while I was pregnant with the twins or shortly before. And that's been about two years ago. Holy buckets, I need to stitch faster. I'll never get through everything that I want to get through if it takes me forever to do simple little 
motifs like this. So all the stitching is done. I thank you everyone for your input on uh, framing and whatnot. Right now I get to sort all of this. This is all the floss that I used for it, all the colors that it called for. So I get to sort all that back into my big tackle boxes full of floss. And then I get to break out new bobbins and wind all of these. <laughs> this would be all of my stuff for the Once Upon a Time sampler, which was last year's stitch along from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Obviously, I did not start it or keep up with it. I had grand plans to finish the winter sampler in time to start this one this year and do once a month, do each block once every month, and yeah, that obviously didn't happen. Uh, but eventually this will be done and hanging in Tara's room. I will be lucky if I get it done by the time she's actually interested in princesses and fairy tales. Right now, um, she actually likes playing with her brother's little dump truck more than with her baby dolls. So, hey, that's cool because Gabe drags the baby doll around a lot. But they both play with each other's stuff, so it's all cool. Uh, the thing that I found, this looks like a hot mess, but I actually have it well organized. I went in the order. Uh, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery does this fabulous thing with their patterns, and I wish I brought my iPad down so I could show you. Uh, their color key for all of their floss, it's not necessarily in numerical order, but when I go through and pick them out, I put them in the order of the color key. So going around, they started with black, and then they went to this deep garnet, and then they went to a lighter red, and then they went to the Christmas red, and so on and so forth the whole way around. And it made it easier, so I knew when I was looking for a certain color, I could go to the color key and go, oh, that's about halfway down, so that should be about, oh, here, here we go, I found it. Made things a tad bit easier. Also kept all my bobbins in one place, so I didn't have to go hunting for them. I didn't have to have a box, I could just grab. This is just a giant stitch holder that my mom gave me years ago. I don't even remember. Mom, I don't even remember what you gave me this for. I might have pulled it out of her floss boxes uh, when she gave me all those. But I'll, all I do is I take my little bobbin cards. And obviously they have a hole in one end. And there's my little number. Obviously some of them are numbered differently because different people have numbered them. Ooh, that one's not going to focus. But... I just slide that hole on the one side through the stitch holder and I've got this wonderful little multitasking tool. So it's not just a stitch holder, it's also a floss holder. Love it! Um, I'm big on Alton Brown watching Food Network. Love Good Eats. Love Cutthroat Kitchen, but he's very big on multi-purpose tools, not having a tool that does just one thing. And one thing I found as a nurse is, especially as a night shift nurse, because maintenance isn't always there to fix things when we need to, we can always MacGyver something. Give me enough medical tape and paper clips and string, and I can come up with something to fix something that you need. Uh, so this is my MacGyver of the day. Use your stitch holders. As floss holders. Why not? If you're not using them for a sweater, boom, they can go with your cross stitch project. Yay! So that's everything for pokey things. Hopefully by next week I will have started accurately in the center of the cloth this time rather than shift it up into one side. Uh, the once upon a time sampler. Or at least have all the floss wound onto bobbins. We'll see. So various and sundry. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for being so patient with me. Honestly, last week, I lost, I'll be honest, I lost track of what day it was. <laughs> it wasn't until uh, hubby came home in the evening from work that I realized, shoot, it's Wednesday. 
it's too dark for me to record because I like to have a little bit of light coming from outside. Uh, so life got in the way. The twins were being very, very fussy that day and needed um, a lot of corralling and I was just tired and yeah, life, it happens. Uh, so life and the twins conspired against me. And then I'm recording a day early because Sunday I was taken out by a very nasty, nasty stomach virus. I'm not going to give you guys the details. Trust me, you don't want to know. So it's Tuesday. I'm still in recovery mode. I still feel kind of weak. Not as bad as yesterday, but um, I'm actually able to keep food down, which is good. I'm able to keep fluids down, which I'm still rehydrating. And that basically took out my whole Sunday. I was supposed to work Monday night, Monday morning. Uh, after having slept all night, I pretty much crawled back into bed uh, after I helped hubby get the babies up and feed them breakfast. Crawled back into bed, slept all day. And when he went to run into work to do some quick paperwork stuff, uh, I told him there's no way. I couldn't even open, they have like little baby cereal bars from Gerber and we give those to the twins sometimes for breakfast. I couldn't even get one of those open Monday morning. I was so weak. I was sitting there just struggling and struggling and it's just a little foil wrapper. I couldn't open a cereal bar. Ah. So a uh, 12 hour virus that basically took me out from slightly before noon until about midnight. At least midnight's when my fever broke <laughs> and I started feeling a bit more human. And yeah, it's just not good, not good. So I had him tell the day shifters that I wasn't gonna be in that night, which unfortunately was gonna leave the night shift very short, but luckily one of the other uh, house supervisors was able to switch a day with me, so I will be working tomorrow night, Wednesday night, which I normally don't work. She covered my Monday, I will be working her Wednesday. So that's why I wanted to get, since I skipped last week, I wanted to make sure I recorded for you guys this week and not leave you hanging for three weeks straight. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being so understanding. It's so wonderful. It's why you're getting pajamaed, no makeup, hair in a ponytail me. Because, uh, yeah, I've just, I hate being sick. I hate it. And I just, I got demolished by this stomach virus. So uh, I'm just glad it wasn't worse that I didn't give it to hubby or the babies. And I basically sequestered myself in our bedroom all day long and did nothing but be miserable. So there we have it. I'm going to let it go at that. I really don't have anything else to share with you guys. Uh, I guess until next week, happy knitting.